Alrighty, doing the next video on iterative algorithms, and this time we're tackling one that um, is a bit trickier, so we get, <coughs> pardon me, into the three-tiered ones. So, let's just write it out. 4i is equal to 1, 2, uh, let's just make sure I jot it down exactly, and do 4j is equal to 1, to I do four K is equal to one oops two J do let's just make that a bit neater X plus plus or any any single operation. Um Oh, actually, the exact example. Oh no, yep, this is one of the examples. Question 15. Good times. So this does obviously take it kind of one step further, um, and just by looking at it, it's three tiers, so we can make a rough approximation that this is going to be theta g of n cubed. That's that uh, shouldn't come as any great surprise because it's a third nested loop. But how do we do it? And specifically, how do we do it the way that we've been doing it? So I'm going to write this down exactly the same way, because that gets us out of algorithm land and into math land, and math land has rules. So for i equals 1 to n, for j equals 1 to i, Oops. for k equals 1 to j, 1, right? Because x plus plus is just that single thing. And this is, again, this is our cost of this algorithm. So next up, we're going to uh, simplify this out kind of as we always do. So we're going to go um, C of n is equal to i is equal to 1 to n of j is equal to 1 to i of, and this is our famous j minus 1 plus 1 is j. So nothing of any kind of great surprise there. And then here, we actually see that, oh, this is kind of in that same form that we're used to seeing where you're just summing the iterator all the way up to that. So even though it, it takes a little bit of a different form because it's j not i now, uh, it's the exact same formula. Um, so I guess just to uh, show that, we'll say that this is using the formula from i equals 1 to n of i is equal to n outside of n plus 1 on 2. That's kind of our, one of our classic formulas. Um, so if we jump back to this side and do these relatively logical conversions, we get i equals 1 to n of, so this becomes j is our replacement for i here, and n is our replace, so the n in this equation is i here. Um, so j equals 1, so this all lines up, so what we're going to end up with here is i outside of i plus 1 on 2. So now we've got uh, kind of a, a different formula. Um, and we can still work with this, so first off, we're going to need to use kind of a couple of different of some formula here. Uh, so if you remember, one that I mentioned earlier is, let's just see if I can remember it off the top of my head, so if you're looking it up, is from i equals l to u of c a i is equal to c any, any constant that doesn't depend on i, you can just take it out the front like so, right? Um, and so if we look at this as uh, as kind of a half times that, uh, the first thing we can do is, whoops, let's just delete that. The first thing we can do is take this half out the front. So again, if we look at this as, uh, in fact, I'll just do it step by step equals 1 to n of 1 half times i outside of i plus 1, um, which is what that is. So we can convert that to 
one half, or I mean, it's simple enough here just to go 0 0.5, or eh, nah, we'll leave it as one half. One half times i equals 1 to n of i outside of i plus 1. And that's totally a thing that we can do using that formula. So now we've got a little bit simpler. Let's go one step further, kind of do the, the natural expansion that's sitting here. So we've got a half times a equals 1 to n of i squared plus i, just expanding out those brackets. And this introduces us uh, to another sum rule, um, which is, again, let's swap over to our blue line to show that we're just using a sum formulae, that sum of, uh, what's the notation, i equals l to u of a i plus or minus b i uh, is equal to, let's just scroll over here to the right a little bit, ah, uh, nope, totally going to run out of room there, I'll just go underneath, um, is totally equal to the sum of i equals l to u of a, which depends on i, plus the sum of i equals l um, of b i. So basically we can split these two terms that both depend on i, which is exactly what we've got here. We've got term 1, which totally depends on i, it's i squared, and term 2, which totally depends on i because it's i. Um, and so what we can do is split them into two separate things, which is exactly what we're going to do. So if we come back over this side, this now gives us, and so the half goes out the front of the entire thing now, half outside of i equals 1 to n of i squared plus i equals 1 to n of i. And so now we've expanded it into a different form, and all of a sudden this term is starting to look like something uh, that we can do something with. So let's expand that term first. We've seen that a bunch of times now. So we're going to come out to half outside of n sigma i equals 1 to i squared plus, and this we know expands to n outside of n plus 1 on 2, because n is our top term there. So that gets rid of 1 of our sum notation, but what do we do about the second one? Something to i squared, we haven't actually seen that before. But luckily, it is a formula. So if we just write down, again, this formula is just in the back of our um, week three notes. I'll just write down it exactly. What we have is the sum of i equals l to n of i to the power of k is roughly equal to, and it does use roughly equals here, but I think we can trust it, 1 divided by k plus 1 times n to the k plus 1. I have no idea how they reasoned that out, but I'm just going to take that word for it because it's super helpful. So we now can expand out our i squared term, because i squared is i to the power of k, where k equals 2. So now if we expand this out, what we get is 1 half times, so this whole thing becomes 1 over, now k is 2 in our case, to the power of k to the power of 2, so 1 over 2 plus 1 times n to the power of 2, because k is 2, plus 1 is 3, so times n to the power of 3. So that's how expanded this term, plus n outside of n plus 1 over 2. And now we've gotten rid of all of our sum notation, we've got the entire thing purely in terms of n, um, which is happy days. So I mean, if we want to keep going with this, we can, we can say a half outside of n cubed on 3 plus n squared 
plus n on 2. Well, we can expand the half back in. We can say that this is equal to n cubed on 6 plus n squared plus n on 4. And actually, you can probably even get it further than that. Um, but at this point, that is totally the answer to our... Well, I don't actually quite have enough room to write um, cost here, but the cost of this equation is equal to that, which is, unsurprisingly, um, bounded by theta g to the n cubed, because highest order polynomial is n cubed, so this constant doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, etc., uh, etc., etc. But, so, this one uses a couple more formulae, but when we approach it the same way by first writing it out like this, um, we can just then use, so the translation from here to here is identical to what we've been doing in the, the simpler previous ones, and then just by using a bunch of different rules, we can expand out the terms, manipulate it, and eventually end up with the answer, which I never would have gotten if I just tried to reason it out like I could with the first two.